Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel is Making with Marilyn. Now I do all things crafty, but on today's video, I'm gonna show you how I made this shirt for my husband. Now he saw that I made a vacation shirt for myself, so he asked me just yesterday, can you make a shirt for me? So this is what I came up with. I think it turned out really, really nice. So we're taking our Jeep to Colorado and he wanted a Jeep inspired shirt. To do this, I used DTF transfer film. I used DTF powder. I used some heat tape, a lint roller, some scissors, and then a little weeding tool. In addition to that, I use my sublimation printer and a heat press. Now he's gonna be getting out of the shower any minute, so I need to get the shirt back downstairs. If you're interested in seeing how I did this, stay tuned. Now I feel like that printed beautifully. So let's go ahead and put the DTF powder on it. Now sublimation ink takes a little while to dry. So you have a few minutes, but you don't want to let this dry before you put your powder on. So I have a little medicine cup. I'm just going to get a bunch out and generously lay that on my print. All right, that is more than I need, but that's okay. And then I'm just going to take my film and have that powder go back and forth over my ink. I want to make sure that I have powder attached to all of my ink. Now notice I have the butcher paper under, that way it can catch the excess powder. And then once I feel like it's all covered, I can go ahead and just dump the extra off. And then I like to tap it because you're going to have quite a bit of extra. All right, that looks good. Now there are a couple of roller marks. They'll show up more after I put this under the heat press to cure this, but then we'll scrape them off. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this under the heat press. I'm not going to put the platen down on it. I'm going to put it under there at 385. I'll check it after 45 seconds. Now the reason I like to set my temperature at 385 is I want to go ahead and have that sublimation ink activate. Now with this being a black and white print, you're not going to notice it as much, but you will notice it getting more vibrant. Now here's after the first 45 seconds, and you can already tell that a lot of that has melted, but let's go for 45 more. Now while that timer is counting down, let me show you. I go ahead and I tape some of those little silicone things to the inside. I think that helps with moisture control. Now that's after 45 more seconds. Notice how it looks melted. What I don't want is any of that powder left. I want it to be melted. That's just how I like to do mine. Now some people don't even cure the powder. They just put it on their shirt and they press. I'm going to do this one more time for about 30 seconds. Now that it's done curing, you can really see the ink that was left behind from the rollers. So right here, right along here. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and cut this away from the paper that it's back to. That'll remove quite a bit of that to begin with. Then I'll have to scrape the rest off. I don't want them showing up on my shirt and so I do like to take the time to scrape them off. So here's what it looks like with the white paper behind it. 
And then here's what it looks like without it. So I'm going to use a little weeding tool. And I'm just going to scrape away the powder on those marks. The powder is what the ink uses to stick to your shirt. So if you remove that powder, in theory, the ink's not going to infuse into your shirt. That's been my theory, and so far, the things I've made where I've scraped away the ink, even though you might still see a little bit of stain, or I'm sorry, where I scraped away the powder, it doesn't show up on the shirt. Now it gets a little trickier <laughs> right there, so I'll just do the best I can. This is a hack. It's not true DTF. And so you just do the best you can. Now, if you don't cure your powder before you actually put it on the shirt, I don't know how you would clean those up. All right, let's put this on the shirt. Now, in the instructions, and remember, usually this is used with DTF ink, so it does take a little bit of modification. I pretty much follow the instructions, though, and so far it's worked out beautifully. So here's what it says. Press it at 325 for 10 seconds under very firm pressure. And then it says peel it after 10 seconds. Some people let it cool all the way off, I'm going to see what happens after 10 seconds. If it feels like it's stretching, I'll put it back down, press it again, and then I'll let it cool all the way off. So here's my shirt. It is a Hanes Cool Dry. It actually has a decent amount of polyester in it. It's 60% polyester, 30% cotton, and 10% rayon. But, you know, this hack works on 100% cotton. All right, so in this picture, we were going downhill, and this wheel was off the ground. I think that looks close to the way it should be, but let me have my husband approve this before I actually press it on. I think it's good. Now you don't really need any heat tape on this, but I'm gonna to have to carry it a little way, so I wanted to put that on it just so it didn't move. Now, again, most people say to let this cool all the way down. The instructions say 10 seconds. Now, again, the instructions are assuming you're using DTF ink and I use sublimation ink. So let me see. Oh, that looks like it's coming off nicely. Now there's no splotches left on the back. I think that's a really good job. The one thing is though, after the first press, it feels very smooth. Now it's still very thin, but it feels very smooth. I want it to really press down into the garment. So to accomplish that, you can put a piece of parchment paper. So not butcher paper, butcher paper would stick to this. Put a piece of parchment paper over it, press it again for about 10 seconds, and then it should be good. Let me go do that. Okay, to me that feels so much better after you have that second press. It just feels like it's one with the fabric of the shirt almost. I can still feel that it's on the top a little bit, especially where it's such thick black. It feels great though.
And I really like this monotone look. So just the black on the gray. So if you've tried this, let me know what your experiences were in the comments section. Thanks so much for joining me today. And until my next video, bye-bye.